ray traced cyberpunk ninjas. Yeah, that's a real game and it's called Ghost Runner, a PC game whose demo released on May 6th and will be available to May the 12th. And to talk about this game demo, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, John Linneman. How you doing there, John? Pretty good. You think that's that's how the pitch meeting went for this one? Like Ray Trace, <laughs> yeah. uh, Cyberpunk Ninjas? They just walked into the room, tossed the thing on the table, and like Ray Trace, Cyberpunk Ninjas. And uh, and 3D Realms was like, uh, yeah, we have this like really crass guy named Duke Nukem. Ray Trace, Cyberpunk Ninjas don't sound so far fetched. Um, the game is kind of that. You're, how would you describe it, John? So my best take on the game is that this is essentially sort of, it's like a Mirror's Edge style game, right? Where it's focused on, mm -hmm. on very fast environment navigation, wall runs, jumping, you know, dashing in the air, but you're basically an assassin. You're like a cyborg mm -hmm. ninja assassin. You have a very sharp sword. So while running around, you are taking out enemies. But the enemies, at least in the demo, are not of the, like, oh, AI chase you around kind of variety. It's almost like they're obstacles within the... So this is where Mirror's Edge always faltered, where, like, the gun sections were, were pretty poor and slowed down the pace. Where here, it's about chaining the enemies into your run. Yeah. And I think it's a really compelling thing. So it's it's a it's a different sort of game, but I like it. It has a lot of potential. And it's I also really enjoyed the fact that uh, it's a game where you'll fail probably qu quite often. Uh, the demo is pretty short. I beat it in around, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes. You can do it a lot shorter if you actually know what you're doing. But, you know, when you fail, you just really quickly tap R and it immediately loads the game. That's back right. Up to the last checkpoint. Instant retries. Instant retries. Uh, so you don't get super frustrated. And you can end up, like, trying out different strategies about how to beat the room that you just entered or how to, you know, beat it in a way that you think is cool or stylish, which I always like. Uh, so it's a really fun game to play and I really look forward to the full release but I think a big part of this release is obviously the fact that it has ray tracing features that uses Nvidia you know DirectX ray tracing <laughs> RTX cards can enable ray tracing this game and when you turn that on you'll see obviously some nice visual wins there but it has a huge FPS cost here um, in this scene that you're looking at Turning on RTX as it's labeled in the menu reduces frame rate by 64%. Now, I do, I do want to note quickly for anybody that wants to try this yourself, do note that so my mistake was starting the game from the desktop shortcut initially, mm -hmm. in which case it just launches into the default. I guess it's a DX11 mode. Uh, you want to start it from within Steam, and then you get a prompt to use what they call the experimental DX12 render. And that is where you get access to the RTX option. Yeah, and that option uh, is basically three RT effects in one. Ray trace name inclusion, ray trace reflections, and ray trace shadows. So it's three effects that are generally pretty expensive in their own right put into one. So it's, it's extreme cost actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, let's break it down then. Like you start with... To even break this down at all and measure the individual cost of settings, I use Franz Bauma's Universal Unreal Engine 4 unlocker to figure out what's going on. It's this cool kind of injection DLL thing that you can start Unreal Engine 4 games, inject it, and then you'll get access to the game console and a number of other things like cameras and stuff like that. So you can make your own screenshots. It's a really cool tool. Um, but this also allowed me to, to, to turn on the RT features individually and to measure their performance cost to see what's actually happening. So, you know, you have RT shadows and they, they'll they add detail shadows to small objects. You know, they'll modify baked shadows that are low res so, so that they'll look higher resolution. It'll add in contact hardening to shadows so you'll see them start off really sharp and then get really diffuse. So like a tiny grate like really high above or a tiny uh, wire fence really high above will have really few shadows on the ground. It looks really great. It also fix up like shadow bias problems. So shadows don't disappear. It does, you know, it does a lot. It makes the shadows look better, um, but it has a very variable cost in this game. Um, if you look at a wall, for example, like you can see here, the cost of turning on RT shadows is 39%, which is actually pretty high then it can you know wildly swing to something like in this scene where i'm looking at these trash bags on the ground uh, where it adds in a lot of shadow detail but at the same time you're losing out 63 percent of your performance by just turning on this one ray trace setting so sh shadows are an interesting one because you know traditionally it's the first setting that i would turn down mm -hmm. but at yep. the same time um i mean 
ray trace shadows can be quite dramatic and I think it does kind of come down to how heavily the game leans on shadow projecting lights basically if you have a lot of shadows in a scene or a lot of fine objects where you get those really high precision shadows up close then it can be a very attractive option here but it sounds to me what you're saying is that the actual performance cost is high enough where uh, and in the the specific nature of this game where maybe it's not worth it and I do want to quickly touch on as well the other part and you can tell me the performance cost of this because I actually haven't measured but ambient occlusion right so ambient occlusion with using ray tracing is a really wonderful feature I mean the idea of ambient occlusion is to handle those there's sort of like contact shadows or like very ambient shadowing right the idea is that you simulate this and up until now, we mostly relied on screen space solutions, but that just sort of creates that. I mean, everybody that's played these games, you know, it. it's it darkens these corners and edges. You get this like black halo effect around objects sometimes. Uh, it can work really well when done right. And there's different implementations, but it often leaves visible artifacts as a result of the screen space nature of it. So obviously ray tracing ambient occlusion can be ideal for solving those issues and it can look really good but the problem i've noticed with this game is that the way they designed the artwork and a lot of older games you would see a lot of like light maps and you know pre-calculated lighting sort of baked into the scenery textures in such a way mm -hmm. to sort of simulate that within the static environment geometry and i kind of feel like the way that they've pre-calculated and sort of baked this lighting into the world means that just layering on the ray traced ambient occlusion doesn't have a significant impact on the visuals precisely this also happens with the ray trace shadows to a certain degree because they baked so much of the direct lighting and even indirect lighting uh, using light maps uh, so that there's like static shadows on the ground or there's static ambient occlusion already there essentially as part of as a texture that when you turn on RTAO or turn on RT shadows uh, you're basically seeing an extremely small percentage difference between the images uh, for an extreme cost and you know, like I had to search for areas to really show off where RTAO even shows up. It's a tricky thing because within the game, if you're switching the option on and off, you're not going to immediately see the difference because you're in the menu. Right? Yeah, right. So I actually found it very difficult to pinpoint the difference without taking screenshots, which to me is a sign that, okay, for this specific game, perhaps this technique doesn't actually make sense. And that's fine. This isn't a game that focuses on dynamic lighting in the sense that there's no time of day changes. The geometry can be static. There's not physics on it, you know, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, so it's not necessarily made for these things. If the game had more dynamic content and more dynamic lighting, uh, then it would be a, a much greater difference. But the one thing that did offer a much greater difference was the use of uh, ray traced reflections because yes. the game is this, you know, <laughs> cyberpunk world. Um, so it has tons of, you know, like, you know, Blade Runner style puddles on the ground. It's raining constantly. It's nighttime. There's glass. There's metal. There's a lot of opportunities for reflections. So it's a perfect showcase of that. So when you do turn them on, you will see actually a, a quite big visual difference. There's a lot less light leaking and things like that. But at the same time, Unreal Engine 4's um, RT reflections are pretty expensive and have variable cost. Um, so like here, looking at this puddle in front of the garage door in this little tiny scene, uh, it only costs around 30% uh, of your performance to turn on RT reflections individually. But in another scene where I'm looking directly into a puddle, it's covering most of the entire stream. That will cost 70% performance. Ooh. So it would take you from being 4K and 60 and above to like really low FPS. And that is a huge cost. Yeah, it's too, it's too large a cost, I think, in this case. Yeah, it's too large of a cost. And I do actually wonder why this is happening because I've played a number of games now with uh, RT Reflections and they do have, you know, they're more expensive the more RT Reflections are on the screen. Yet it's never been such a large disparity as this. Like, I didn't see that really happening in Control. Uh, it definitely doesn't happen in Battlefield Five. Um, so... How many rays are they shooting out per pixel and that kind of stuff? Like, and, and how... I actually don't know what the control is within Unreal Engine 4, how you define, like, the precision of the ray tracing that they're actually doing here, because that should have a huge impact. This is a really interesting thing. So utilizing uh, this Unreal Engine Unlocker, I could actually go into the console and see what 
how the RT reflections were set up. And the one thing I noticed immediately was that RT reflections in this game are full resolution. So yes. if you're playing the game at 4K like I was doing here, uh, these are 4K reflections. So them being so expensive makes a lot of sense. I actually think that's an important point that a lot of people should think about is, is I think with consoles, especially having ray tracing, mm -hmm. uh, full resolution ray trace reflections are not going to be something we see often. Doing doing it at a lower resolution doesn't mean they won't be still beautiful with the right filtering and, you know, you still get the accuracy. So you don't need to do it like this. This is like extremely hardcore. Battlefield 5, its resolution of its um, RT reflections is more or less 40% of the whole screen resolution and they still look really great. Yeah, exactly. They're gorgeous. Like you don't, that's all you need really, right? Yeah. So in this game though, when I did turn it down to 50% of the screen resolution at 4K, didn't bring back that much performance in the end. You know, 16%. It's visible, but you know, not a huge amount. But the problem was in this engine, for some reason, turning down the resolution of the uh, RT reflections they have caused a lot of sparkle and I think it's because they're using a very high feedback low temporal accumulation uh, RT reflections so they don't really ghost at all in movement like you could see in other games but they require more rays to be stable which means they're more expensive another thing that I also learned that they're using to try, try and optimize the RT reflections in this game is by having uh, a roughness cutoff as it's called so the, only the most smooth objects in this game the way it's set up will actually have RT reflections so like really water like very very reflective materials and I, I, th exactly. I think that kind of makes sense overall for but I feel like you know cutting the resolution of the reflections and increasing the roughness cut off but well continue you can actually do that I believe yeah yeah I did end <laughs> up doing that so uh, if you do increase the roughness cut off to include less smooth objects so more rough objects you're gonna get a much more realistic looking image where you know it, there's like less glow more of the objects look situated in the scene correctly but at the same time it massively <laughs> it, you know like reduces your performance just even tiny uh, cuts off when I turned it all the way up actually to the point where every single object that has a certain amount of shininess to it receives RT reflections uh, to a certain degree, I lost 70% of the performance. So it, was, it became completely unplayable at 4K. And I just think the show is really, what kind of optimizations are gonna be you know, used, especially in Unreal Engine games, from next gen titles to get yeah. you know things like RT reflections in there. That's exactly what I'm thinking. This is a great game for demonstrating that. It it directly shows us the performance cost of adjusting these settings and it also gives us an idea of what developers will have to work with on the consoles. So obviously you know yeah. using ray tracing is very feasible then on those machines you just have to do it in such a way that you know you're working around its limitations as you know and there's nothing new about that that's just how it's always been right so it makes sense you do that with shadow maps you do yeah, exactly that with, you know image-based probes you do that with everything and this is just another way to do it um but one of the things I also tried out using the console variables was there's an experimental version of ray trace global illumination uh, that adds bounce light in from any of the real time light sources in the game or in Unreal Engine in general. This game uses a lot of baked light sources that aren't actually real, so it doesn't apply to every light. But it can look really cool, like you can see in this scene here, adding a ton of bounce light in that looks really realistic. Uh, but it's insanely expensive. <laughs> it costs 76% of the performance to just turn it on. So it went from oh, above 60 FPS at 4K to uh, like below 30. So it's not playable at all. But you know, this is the future of rendering in a couple years with more research, better hardware. It's gonna be there. And to show that, I actually took one scene where I gradually turned on every single effect. Like I started with adding in shadows being ray traced. I started adding in ray traced ambient occlusion. I added in the reflections. I got rid of the roughness cut off. And then I added in the GI and it made the scene look so much more realistic, but it went from 88 frames per second to seven frames per second. So I kind of feel like the old Windows 95, did somebody spike my game ad actually comes into effect here. <laughs> yeah, and I know, you right? see that because it, it looks phenomenal with everything cranked up. Yeah. But yeah. You know, seven frames per second. I mean, for some people, if you're a GoldenEye or sorry, Perfect Dark fan, that might work. Yeah, this is, this is for you. Um, RTX 2080 Ti, 4K, seven frames per second. There it is. The real performance of the game though, obviously uh, depends on what your settings are. I played uh, in my playthrough that you're seeing here through most of this footage of me just like B-rolling around. Uh, it's at 1440p with the temporal upsampling uh, from Unreal Engine 4. 
using RT reflections. And that was actually 60 FPS for a majority of the time, minus uh, when you'd get really close up to a reflection, or for some reason there was these weird stutters uh, that could occur like when I got near this fan yes. here. For whatever reason, the game just lurches the FPS there. So I had that that same issue, but for on my setup, I actually played uh, again a 2080 Ti, uh, but on a 3840 by 1600 ultra wide monitor. And in that case, I was playing at 50%. So it's I guess technically less than 1080p at that point, yeah. but it did lock me down to a solid 60 frames per second, except for those occasional stutters. But in the original release of the demo when we first played it the fov setting for ultra wide monitors was completely messed up there was no fov adjustment in there and it was much too narrow so it gave it this feeling of the view basically being restricted but just before we recorded this they actually updated the game and added in an fov slider so yeah thank goodness for that that's a that's a very nice addition it's a very important one uh i also tried the game out on an RTX 2060, so the lowest desktop uh, GPU that can run ray tracing currently. If you turned RTX on at 1080p with everything set to epic or high or ultra, it was below 60 FPS the entire play, basically. Uh, that's with all three settings on that you can only access through the menu. It's like 40 FPS when you're dancing around. And I also think it's running out of VRAM uh, technically, uh, so it could like lurch occasionally. It wasn't... Yeah, RT is pretty heavy on RAM in general, so... Yeah, and it, you know, <laughs> it's just... They, they need more options in the menu. Uh, I did enable just RT reflections at 1080p, and that was actually 1080p 60 for the entire playthrough of uh, of the demo uh, with some headroom above it, excluding some occasional like um, short FPS drops that were unexplainable. Though I do think uh, the game is suffering from shader compilation stutter in DX12, which would explain some of those frame rate lurches that we're seeing on both of these GPUs. So I hope the developers or graphics drivers can fix that. Another thing they need to add in is they have a resolution scaler but it doesn't use Unreal Engine's temporal upsampling, so it just looks like the internal resolution that you turn it down to. 4K, you know, brought down to 68%, uh, looks like 1440p, which you yeah, can see here. exactly. But if you use this Unreal Engine unlocker to turn on the temporal upsampling, the game looks so much better and runs the exact same. Yeah. Uh, just like, you know, much crisper. So yeah, they really need to add that in, or even better would be adding in NVIDIA's DLSS 2.0 since Unreal Engine supports it and it would look way better than this temporal upsampling even. Other than that, you know, awesome looking game, has ray tracing, maybe not the perfect use in some aspects with like RTAO and shadows, but the reflections look great in the cyberpunk ninja you know, assassin slaying world. And uh, I really liked it. I agree. I think it's a beautiful, fun little demo. Uh, and, you know, the ray tracing stuff is hit or miss, but the reflections look excellent. I'm very excited for the full game. I love it too. And uh, more first person games. Exactly. Can't complain. Uh, but thanks. Thanks for joining me, John. Of course. Yeah. And if you did like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to John or myself about cyberpunk ninjas that are ray traced, write a comment below or follow John and myself on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex bidding you farewell on cyborg cyberpunk ninjas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>